Hello, everyone. What I want to do is go over uh, homework six. Um, so because I'm going to start using the um, uh, financial calculator, I'm going to have to use my desktop and it can't handle uh, video. So um, yeah, you're not going to get to see me on these uh, videos from now on. But I'm sure you guys aren't going to be too upset by that. All right, so let's get to it. Um, so first of all, draw time diagrams for these. Um, if you screw it up and don't draw the time diagram, um, I'm going to be a little harsher in the future just because there's really no reason to screw it up if you draw the time diagram. Um, all right, so you got two annuities. First pays 40 every 10 years, starting at the end of the 20th year, and has present value 100. So let's just do annuity one first. So you can work with the uh, equivalent effective annual interest rate, but it is easier to just say J1 is the 10-year interest rate. All right, so time diagram is as follows. Um, so you can either do in 10 year intervals, you know, or just say uh, in years uh, up top here. Uh, I forget what I did the last time. I think I did just because, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just do, uh, I'll do uh, years here. So that there's absolutely no confusion at all. That's 10, 20, et cetera. Uh, so 40 every 10 years, starting at the end of the 20th year, which is 20, sorry, uh, T equals 20. All right. All right. So use plain, uh, annuity formula. Present value is 40 A infinity J1. And we have to discount this by 10 years. So it's 40 infinity j1 times 1 plus j1 to the uh, this is my 10 year interest rate so we're we're discounting it by one 10 year period and so this is simply 40 over j1 times 1 over 1 plus j1 uh, yeah, plenty of room. Okay, so we know we're given present value is 100. So um, 100 is 40 over J1, just distribute plus J1 squared. Um, yeah, so multiply both sides by uh, J1 plus J1 squared and divide by 20. You're gonna get um, five J1 plus J1 squared equals uh, two. So it's uh, five J1 squared, five J1, Minus two is zero. And um, yeah, just quadratic formula. You're gonna get J1, or you just J, J1, doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm gonna omit the negative one. I should have mentioned uh, that it has a positive interest rate, but so this is point oh, sorry, it's point three zero six two three by quadratic uh, formula. Right. Uh, sorry, this equals zero. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you don't really need to draw this time diagram for the second one, but I guess I'll just do it anyway. Uh, 
right. So here it's just uh, every uh, two months. Beginning of each month. Beginning of every two months, rather. So it starts at the beginning of the first two months. So it's 20, 20, 20, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, um, yeah, let's say J2 is my uh, two month interest rate. So you can either connect everything to the equivalent effective annual interest rate or uh, you know, how many times do you have to compound two months of growth to get uh, 10 years of growth? Well, six months of six times, you know, you compound two months of growth six times to get uh, one year times 10 is 10 years. So it's 60. 30625. Uh, one plus a uh, one point three oh six two five, so one point three oh point oh oh four four six. So the present value is just 20 A infinity double dot um, oh, oh, four, six. And this is just going to be equal four. Five oh one ninety five. Right. Right. Okay, so number two, uh, I've got a lot of weird answers. Right. So, particularly if you are an actuary major, you really have to nail down nominal interest versus and, you know, equivalent versus effective annual interest and, and just the relationships between all of these. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do this like the video. First, let me get the monthly interest rate. So by definition, or if you know, just you may just remember this, the... No, the debt really the definition of nominal interest is actual interest rate for a period of one over, in this case, 12 years, which is one month, is I 12 over 12. So uh, let's say it's J, it's I 12 over 12. So one half of a percent. You're growing by one half of a percent every six, every one month, every month. Okay, so uh, the monthly time diagram is as follows. Um, okay, so every, um, so yeah, let me do this. So here is the nth year time diagram. Okay, so uh, it starts at a thousand but increases two percent per year. So it starts off at a thousand, then a thousand, one point oh two, then um, 
in the third year, 1,000, 1.02 squared, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, So it's 1,000, 1.02, the n minus one is yearly, or is the monthly payments rather in the nth year. Right. Well, let me just get rid of the 11 because it's kind of getting a little crowded here. Okay, so a thousand one point oh two n minus one. Okay, so the accumulated value at the end of each month, maybe I'll do it like this, uh, is a thousand. So uh, it's annuity immediate, so payments are at the end of each month. So, so yeah, payments are at the end of each month. Um, so there's no double dot. A lot of people had double dots, which is very strange. Uh, sorry. 1,001.02, and minus one, S, 12.005, so what is that? 12N, 1,000 payment, 0.5% interest. 12, 3 through 5, 56. And I'll save this. So 12, 3 through 5. times 1.02 n minus one. And just like uh, the, the lecture, uh, one second. let's call this P. Okay, so um, so the yearly time diagram, meaning this is how much we accumulate at the end of each year, and we have two, ten years. Uh, is it ten years? Yeah, ten years. And so it's going to be P, then it will increases by 2%, all the way to 1.02 to the 8th, 1.02 to the 9th times P. Okay, uh, so, so first of all, we need to get the annual interest rate. So remember the formula, even if you don't remember the formula, what we're doing is we're taking monthly growth and compounding it twice, sorry, 12 times. So every month, the monthly growth factor is 1.005, same thing as 1.06, 12. And we're compounding one month of growth 12 times to get, well, one year's worth of growth, subtract one, to get uh, my annual interest rate. And I mentioned this in the video. So it's pretty close to 6%, but you know, this is main, this is a course for actuaries. You're dealing with um, you know, insurance companies, pension, managing pensions. You know, we're talking millions, if not billions, of dollars. So if we're doing, you know, we're 
know, a, a big employer for our actuaries is the New York State Pension Fund, which is the New York State Teachers Pension Fund, which is like, I think like $8 billion. Uh, has, the value of it is like $8 billion, B, billion with a B. Um, and that is right here in Albany. So, you know, like, like little, little differences in interest rates makes a big difference. Um, yeah, you know, it doesn't make a big difference if you're an individual. Uh, but yeah, if you're ma managing a pension or just, you know, dealing with corporate stuff, it makes a big difference. All right, so now we can use our formula. Uh, it's one plus I, 1.061678. So this is a long, annoying problem, but uh, it's a good problem, I think. And besides, precision on exam FM is, as I keep saying, because it's true, I mean a difference between passing and failing. So 177703. Okay, uh, three and four, I would say most people, maybe three quarters did this fine, two thirds, um, but uh, so a lot of people did, a good number of people did what I basically said don't do. So I want the amount in the first account here and the amount deposited, not the amount in the account, but the amount deposited. So at the beginning of each year, you invest a thousand, so you invest a thousand, you take the interest and reinvest it. So whatever interest is earned in the first year, you take it out and pop in another thousand for a total of 2000, whatever interest is earned in the second year, reinvest that and pop in another thousand. So after you, so basically, you know, after the first year, you still have a thousand, then you add another thousand, you still have a thousand because you take the interest and put it in the second account. Et cetera, et cetera. So it's 4,000, uh, 19,000, and 20,000. Okay. So a little easier um, than the uh, example in class. I think an example in class, uh, you start investing money at the end of each year. Okay. So in the first year, uh, you earn 3% on your thousand and reinvest that. So the amount deposited into the second account at the end of the first year is just thirty dollars. Three percent of uh thousand then um right so in the second year two thousand earns 3% interest, so it's $60. So 3% of 2,000. I'm gonna stop doing this. It's really annoying to write very neatly. So it's 60, two times 30, uh, et cetera, et cetera, 3,000. So it's 90. So here uh, it's 18,000, the prior amount in the account. Uh, 540. Uh, so it's 18 times 30. And last, but not least, 19 times 30. All right. So it's just a, a increasing annuity. I asked 20. Point oh five S double dot twenty 
0.05. So in the second account, uh, it has 5% interest. So this is the amount deposited into the second account. So it's it's this is basically like an annuity. So what's the accumulated value of this annuity in the usual sense? I'll do this in the calculator as review. Uh, okay. So clear TPM. Okay, uh, 20N, so we're in begin mode, five interest, one payment, get something a little larger than 20, actually probably a bit larger, that's fine. So just, yeah, minus 20, divide by 0.05, Times 30 and 8831.55. Okay, uh, similar problem, kind of a slightly similar. So you have 15,000 deposited. At the end of each year, you um, withdraw 500 plus the interest earned. So each time, so you have the very beginning, 15,000, withdraw interest, whatever it is, we don't care, plus 500, so 14, 500. Again, withdraw interest plus um, 500. So it's 14,000 until you have uh, it's 500 and then zero. Okay. So the general formula is 1,500. You want uh, uh, 1,500. You know, each year we're getting rid of or removing 500 plus the interest. So when t equals 30, it's zero. Okay, okay so uh, nothing here. And I should have said uh, nothing here. t equals zero. Okay, so 15,000 earns one year of interest at 5%. Um, ah, sorry. Yes. So the original account earns 4% interest. So that's how much, that's going to tell us how much we're depositing. So, so it's 500. That's the original 500 that we're withdrawing and putting into the second account. Plus... 4% of 15,000 is 600. And I draw well. So 500 plus 600. Um, so again, 500 plus 14. Yeah, let me do this. Um, trying to zoom in. My life a lot easier. Make this a little smaller. Do one more time. Yeah, it's going to be much, much easier for me. Sorry about this.
Uh, okay, 500 plus uh, 14,500. So 500 plus uh, uh, what is it, uh, 580. So it's decreasing by 20, so it's 500 plus 30 times 20, 500 plus 29 times 20, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can check the pattern. So it's 500 plus... 28, all the way down to 500. So it's a prior year, 1,000, of course, times 0.04, so it's 40. 500 plus 2 times 20. And then 500, well, 4% of that is, is 20. Okay, so accumulated value. Uh, you have your two. So the interest rate for a second account, this is how much is deposited into each, um, at the end of each year. It's 500. That accrues to uh, S30, and it's 5% in this account. So regular annuity, or rather, it's this um, constant annuity of 500 plus this decreasing annuity. Okay, so um, yeah, I won't do this in a calculator. This is 33, 219, 42. I'll just remind you this is whatever's here 1.05 to the 30th minus S30.05 over 0.05. This is 25, 287, 77, this whole thing. So 58, 507, 19 is the total. Uh, okay, five, two ways to do this. Um, uh, this is kind of like number one. Just draw the time diagram. It just makes your life so much easier. And if you screw it up and don't draw the time diagram, then I'm just going to guess that you're just basically guessing based on prior uh, based on prior homework examples or just prior examples. And to me, these are, you know, a problem like this, uh, well, I think was a former exam FM question. Yeah, if you just kind of relax and draw a time diagram and just carefully read things and, and fill in your time diagram, it's easy points, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I really think these are easy points. So at the end of each year for nine years, Right. So nine years, nine payments increases by 2% starting at the end of the 10th year, which is T equals 10. So 150, 1.02, 150, uh, 
et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So uh, yeah, break it up into two annuities. First we have uh, 150s. And I'll do it the way most people did. Uh, you have nine 150s. You could do eight also, it's up to you. That doesn't really matter. So, um, this is 150. Uh, interest rate is 5%, so you got nine of these, 0. 0.05. And beginning of the first payment period is, well, t equals zero, so no discounting here needed. All right. And now we have uh, this here, uh, so like this. So no reason not to treat it like an annuity. Um, no reason not to treat it like an annuity immediate. So the first payment period is nine to 10. Payments are at the end, or deposits rather, or at the end of each period. Um, so this is gonna, so the first one is 150, 1.02. So then the present value formula is if it increases by 2% each year, interest rate is 5%, uh, 0 0.02 minus 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.02. But this is, uh, present value formula gives me this at t equals nine. Again, that's the first payment period, nine to 10, the beginning of the first payment period. And always present value formulas give you the present value at the beginning of the first payment period. So uh got discount discount this by nine years at five percent. All right. Uh yeah this is the green. So it's four three five three sixty eight. Right. Or if you want to do it the other way, you have eight years of this, and this is going to be a mess for me to erase, but I'll try to do this kind of quickly. Shouldn't be too bad. You can check, you get the same answer. Um, bear with me a second. Okay, so if you want to do it with eight, that's fine. There we go. Got eight of these, and we got nine of these. So here it starts at 150, but we discount it by eight years because the present value formula gives me the present value at the beginning of the first payment period, which now is T equals eight. We'll discount this by eight years. Neither one is better, in my opinion. Let's get the same answer. All right, last one, thankfully. Video's getting a little long. Um, this is just plug and chug formulas, really, essentially. So you have an annuity in perpetuity, effective annual interest rate I, purchase annual payments, or has annual payments of 125, increasing by 10 each year. So it doesn't hurt to draw a time diagram, I guess. This is my first annuity. So 
So it starts at 125, increases by 10. So I think uh, there is a formula for this situation. Um, if you find it, by all means, use it. I'm always a, just a fan of, of kind of using as few formulas as I can, just simply because I don't like memorizing formulas. By that, I mean, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at memorizing formulas. So uh, especially when it's crunch time and you're you know, under stress taking exam FM. So uh, this increases by 10 uh, each time. So that means this is 115 plus 10, 115 plus 20, 115 plus 30. So present value is 115 a infinity i plus 10 i a infinity i and just pop into formulas one twenty five over i plus ten over i squared. All right, so the second annuity you really don't need. Time diagram. Sorry. It's just an, a normal annuity in perpetuity, payments 400, effective annual interest rate I. So it's just 400 uh, A infinity I. 400 over I. Okay. Uh, yeah, so set these two to be equal because present values are, are given to be equal. Uh, right. So that. Okay, so uh, 400 over I is 125 over I plus 10 over I squared. So multiply uh, everything, I would divide everything by, uh, well, you don't really have to do that quite yet. So multiply everything by I squared. 400 I, or sorry, multiply everything by I. 400 equals 125 plus 10 over I. So I is simply going to be 400 minus 125 is 275. 10 over 275. Reasonable interest rate 0.0363. All right, so sorry, it was a little bit long, but hopefully this helped. Uh, exam two will be up very soon. And uh, yeah, uh, we're two thirds of the way through, two more weeks, and then you yeah, have the rest of the summer free, at least from my grips. You know, I'm sure you still got a job you hate and things like that, but can't really help you there. But yeah, you'll be free of my annoying class in two weeks. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.